Are there implications for that matter? If you want to lose weight, so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, if I want to lose weight and I breathe most of it out, so if I just sit here <laughs> breathing really hard, am I going to lose weight? Or is, is that why if I, if I exercise, I do breathe more? Are they just coincidences or does it give us an insight into the most effective way to lose weight over the long term? It does indeed. Um, so frequently asked question number one is precisely what you just said. Can I just sit here and breathe more? That's called hyperventilation. And Carl, can you run me through the um, what, what happens if you hyperventilate? You blow off your carbon dioxide and your fingers tingle. But part of me, the greedy money side, just thought that we should come out under fake names on a totally con book ah. in the new year after people have eaten too much with a new tantric form of weight loss, which involves breathing a lot mm. with absolutely no science and people buy it up like crazy. Oh. Breathe your way thin. Yeah, you've got a tantric breather. You've got to have some allusion to something exotic that people don't see normally. I'm about exhale, you whale. Yay. Oh, talk and burning. Boom. Man, <laughs> it I, writes I, itself. Right. We've we got to get this out by the new year, though. But So... so in answer to your question, if you just breathe more, all you're doing is hyperventilating and you're not you, – you, what you need to do to w- lose weight faster than what you would just sitting still um, – so I'll give you the maths actually because I've figured it out and it's in this paper. If you sit still, a 70-kilogram person sits still for eight hours, sleeps for eight hours – and then just does activities of the day, as it's called in the trade, which doubles your metabolic rate above resting, so just twice. But you don't go doing exercise, you don't go mm-hmm. running a triathlon, but you no. just get around as you have to. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're not, you're not sort of bedridden. Mm-hmm. Um, then you'll exhale about 210 grams of carbon that yep. day. Now, right. let's replace one hour of just sitting around rest at resting rate and go for a jog for mm-hmm. one hour. That'll multiply your resting me- metabolic rate by seven, so seven METs, as it called, mm. it's called in the trade. For that one hour of what would have been eight hours of... Yep, that's right. So now you will lose 240 grams of carbon. Just Two an extra... Yeah. yeah, not much extra at all. Mm. And that extra little bit represents about 20% of the total. Yep. Here's the real problem. 20%, one muffin that weighs 100 grams... Mm is about 20% of your daily energy requirements. Wow, which so, people would eat without even noticing. That's right. You can just, you know, snack on that and think, oh, yeah, no, that was a muffin. It's reasonably healthy, you might think. You know, had some blueberries in it, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy to overeat your exercise and it's really hard to out-exercise Wow, that's a deep overeating. phrase. It's so easy mm. to overeat your exercise. So you go for a jog for one hour and then you have a muffin cancelled. Cancelled. Wow. And the converse, as you said, it's very hard hmm. to under ex- no, to undereat. Yeah, it's no, hard no, to sorry, add- it's, it's, hard, <laughs> it's hard to overeat. No, it's hard to over exercise. That's right. Your eating. That's right. And it's hard to undereat your exercise? Yeah. Mm. So uh, the way I, I it's it's um it's not a it's not an original phrase that I've come up with by the way. I've heard other people say it. So the trick is that because it's so easy to eat more than your um daily energy requirements even with exercise, mm. um there's the problem for most people because most people can't do much more than an hour of exercise because they've got to work, yep. you've got kids, you know, it's just a time constraint problem. If you rode the um Tour de France, then you're exercising all day, and it, they have trouble eating enough, mm. but that's just so And in fact, in the Antarctic, they couldn't eat enough. Right. And they starved to death, even though they were eating as much as they could. And I spoke to some women who skied their way from the coast to the South Pole, and even though they'd put on 20 kilograms extra beforehand of weight, they lost a kilogram a day, and even though they were eating as much chocolate as they could, they still kept on losing another kilogram and went 10 kilograms below their normal weight. And you hear about those people being on diets of just solidified fat yes. and things like that to try and get the energy. But in your normal steady state, yep. you're saying even an hour a day of exercise will, will eventually get you there, but you've got to be really careful that you don't outweigh that by some sort of accidental eating. And That's eating right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So wow. it really does come down to count your kilojoules, you know, count everything, count what's in your drinks, mm. coffees, uh, everything. And and what's great about this is, so you've done this work, no one's ever done it before. You rang a few professors, they didn't know the answer, and now this has taken off and it's going to be published in one of the world's most prestigious journals? It is in the British Medical Journal. Ah, oh, that's the sound of me being insanely jealous. You've oh never my been God. published in the BMJ, Carl? No, never, never. You ever been published? Ish, kind of, in something that's got an impact factor of about minus point zero ten or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, are the, you are the most 
I- impressive person I know in terms of being paid. But this is, this, oh. is, this is your first ever paper? Yes, wow. first peer-reviewed paper. And first peer-reviewed paper and you've gone the BMJ. Yeah, yeah, we, we bypassed a, a few of the lower down the, uh, the picking oh. order. In fact, we got rejected by one of the, the journals because they wouldn't believe. I did a survey of doctors, dietitians and personal trainers and asked them the question, when someone loses weight, where does it go? Not one doctor said carbon dioxide. Not one personal trainer said carbon dioxide, and only three dietitians remembered their biochemistry. Wow. So um, there is a massive gap in the knowledge of our health professionals who are, you know, it doesn't change the advice they've always given. So they're still correct. Energy less, in more. has to be less than yep. energy out. Yep. So yep. they're not doing anything wrong. But I think this just helps you cast a very critical eye over the claims that other weight loss supposed gurus tend to make. You know, you've got your celebrities out there getting oh. behind all kinds of diets. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you eat nothing but sugar or nothing but protein. As long as it's less and weight loss is your only concern, then it doesn't matter how you do that. But I'm not recommending you only eat one thing. Because the big thing at the moment is to go sugar-free. And Mm. what you're saying there is the issue is not inherently that sugar is evil, but that there is just so much of it hidden in food that if if you if the people who go on sugar free diets say they're stunned at how many foods they find they were eating that had sugar and just the complete sensory overload of not eating sugar anymore mm. and there's so much energy coming out of your diet if you go sugar free yes and moderate it mm. then, yeah. then then you you you'd, you'd inevitably have to lose weight yeah almost i mean you, but it's very easy to replace it with fat although mm. it doesn't taste as good and that you know there's that whole question and i'm not a dietitian so i'm not really an expert on this but there is the question of when you deep fry anything, it's usually carbs. You mm. don't deep fry meat. So that's fat and sugar right there. It, it, this, this part of it gets ah, really interesting, but we've overcomplicated don't deep fry it. Just, just count your kilojoules and get easy. So where to from now for you, Mr Surfing Scientist? One ever peer-reviewed publication. It's in the BMJ. Do you, do you keep going down this path or do you retire from academic publication forever, <laughs> the equivalent of having scored two hundred not out on debut in, your, in the only test match you ever played. <laughs> get out, get out while you're while you're ahead. We've already started on the second paper. We're hoping to get this um, calculation that I've figured out into the biochemistry textbooks. Yes, because. When we teach doctors and dietitians, um, these are very, very smart people, as you know, um, because to get into the courses. Mm. So it's not that they don't get it. It's just that we haven't ever taught it all in the one lecture. We give them various parts and we never show them the whole thing in one go. So I've also got a bunch of demonstrations that I do at schools and I'm, I'm mm. keen to talk to um, uh, you know education departments about, hey, this is really easy to demonstrate. Carbon dioxide dry ice is made out of that. Mm-hmm. You drop some dry ice into water, you've got every kid in the room absolutely hooked. They're yeah. watching and you, there's, and that is what fat becomes. So we've got to just remind kids that what you exhale has mass. It's got kilograms in it. And if you exhale your breath into a clear balloon and freeze that with liquid nitrogen, you can see the dry ice in there. So you can wow. literally see... Well, those little particles of... Yeah. Wow. It's a white powdery substance. Wow, that's your carbon dioxide. There you go. That's where your food... You can and store your ex-fat. Yeah. It has been wonderful talking with you, Ruben Mimmon, on the Sleek Geek podcast. You can follow us at Sleek Geek. Send us Twitter questions. Go to drcarl.com to download the podcast. Though you've already done that. If you're listening to the podcast, didn't need to tell you that. Why don't we all, just together, as one, lose some weight, as we say farewell to listeners, on three. One, two, three. <sighs> See you later. Where does the fat come, the extra fat that I'm now carrying around? Well, so the carbohydrates that you eat and the protein, you can convert that to fat. Your liver does this. Um, and so it... T-